Modeling populations is an incredibly important endeavor. It's important in demography and in understanding the way that populations are going to change over time. It's important in things like epidemiology. So there's a lot of different applications for population growth models. What I'm going to do is show you one way to represent population growth in, in a spreadsheet with a very simple model. This is the exponential model and it has a lot of limitations but it's also super simple. It doesn't have a lot of parameters. It doesn't have a lot of moving pieces that you need to put in to have a guess at what that population is going to do. So have a look at the screen in the lower right and let's first think about what goes into that model. So the very basic model is the idea that you have a population that's changing over time by a constant growth rate. So the first piece of this is you need the population size. That's going to help you in just a minute to calculate how much that population is going to change over a given period of time. The next piece is an intrinsic rate of increase. Basically, how quickly is that population going to grow? And I want to be very clear here that that value can be negative too. You could have a population that's not growing, that's shrinking. Last, we want to know how that population is changing. So what the unit of change in the population size is over a unit of time. So that's our basic model. Now, for, for a really simple version of this, we're going to have a model that looks back one step in time. And so we're going to do this one step at a time going forward. And so we can change this and we add the subscript sub t to tell us that it's that we're referring to a particular point in time. So n sub t is the population size at a given time. n sub t plus 1 is the population one step into the future. So this second formula here, n sub t, that's the population now, and then we're going to add to that the change in the population, right? Which is just the intrinsic rate of increase multiplied by the population size. So in just a second here, we're going to switch over to our spreadsheet, which is taking up most of the video space. And we're going to have a look at that and how to implement it. So we're going to have some key parameters. N sub zero, the number in our population at time zero, when, when we start monitoring the population, when the population begins, with some colonists that arrive from somewhere, whatever. And our population growth rate. So this is our intrinsic rate of increase at this point. There are a couple of different ways to, to represent population um, growth rates. We're using the intrinsic rate of increase, but just keep in mind that there are other ways to do this. Um, and so we're going to start that at, at 0 0.5. Okay, let's switch over to our spreadsheet. And this can be any spreadsheet. I want this to be as accessible as possible. You could be using Google Sheets. You could be using OpenOffice. You could be using Microsoft Excel. All those are legit, and they're all going to work in about the same way. Uh, for this example, I'm using OpenOffice. So we're just going to put in equals here, and then we're going to put in our, our original population size, right? But then we also need to put in our R, our intrinsic rate of increase. So let's put R in the cell D1. So D1 times B1. And so right now, that's going to give us an error. Yeah, didn't work, right? So there's our R. Okay. 
Let's try it again. Cool. Now we've got something. Let's label this, because that's a time as well in our population. But you might have noticed that our population goes down, and our intrinsic rate of increase goes is positive. So our population ought to be going up. So what are we going to do about that? Well, this is, if we go back to our basic model, this is just how much the population is changing in one, in one time step. So we need to change this to match our second formula so that we can calculate not only how much our population is changing in that time step, but also how much the total population is. This is pretty easy, actually. So in this case, we're just going to add B1 plus, and we're going to close off that second part with parentheses. Simple. Okay, there we go. That's our population estimate for the next step. Now, to make sure that we're always referring back to the same cell for D1, we're going to put a money sign before each of those references, before the D and before the 1. That makes sure that no matter where we co copy this formula in our spreadsheet, it's always going to refer back to D1. However, our references to B1 are going to get copied relative to wherever we copy that formula. That's really helpful. So, if I pull that down, which copies the formula down, guess what? When I reference that next one, it now references B2, which is one cell above. The same as when I was in B2, it referenced B1, one cell above. So, it's, so that formula is going to follow us around, and it's always going to take the value that's one cell above it. Kind of cool, kind of useful. The money signs mean that no matter where we do that, it's always going to refer back to that cell. Now, since we're not moving left or right any cells, we could get rid of that dollar sign, that first dollar sign before the D. Right? Because we just need to say, hey, stick to row one. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it there because in an abundance of caution, I want that to always be referring to that same cell. Just be aware that that's something you can change. So cool, let's go. There we are. Gets a little funky after a while, right? So we have some, some partial numbers here. You're not going to have a half of a wolf or a quarter of a raccoon. We might want to be a little bit more explicit. I also want to make sure that we're updating this so that it actually matches the example. So now we're going to, it's up to 500, which is where our example from, uh, from our slide over here says. So they now match. Our R is at 0 0.5. And now we've got these funky parts of whatever we're estimating. I'm going to add one more piece so that we can make that even, so that it's a little bit easier. I'll caution you that it gets a little weird if, um, if you go out a lot of generations, you could, this could wind up putting you off by a little bit, but I think it's a little bit easier for you to, to think about a whole organism since that's the context that we're doing this, uh, this formula in. So we're going to round, open the parentheses, comma, and we want zero decimal places. We want whole individuals for this. We're going to close up our parentheses, press enter, and I destroyed it. So the comma is what you would use in Microsoft However, here we're going to use a semicolon.
and it's fixed. Now, we'll drag that down. Drag that down, and there we go. So we probably want to have a visual representation of this. All right. So let's go ahead and grab these data. And we're going to insert a chart. Remember that depending on your software, it may be a little bit different. And this is a pretty good basic chart. We could use the column chart, the bar chart, um, again, depending on your software. I'd rather use the scatter chart because that, that captures what's actually going on. Here. So I'm going to go ahead and do lines. Just because I like the way that looks, it makes a lot of sense. And we're going to finish that out. And guess what? We're good to go. Now, before you present this, you should make sure that you add a label to each of your axes. So on the x-axis, this is time, and you might be specifying hours for bacteria, you might be specifying years for a songbird. But you should, you should use a unit if you're, if you're working that way. Um, because we've only got one line, you can get rid of this column B legend. That's fine. Uh, on the y-axis, this should be your population. You might label that with an N in parentheses. The last thing I want you to notice before we leave this video is that this population is growing unchecked. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many generations you go out. It's always going to grow unchecked. There's no way that these parameters give us a chance to, to modify them. We're going to look at that in a subsequent video and step through how to actually put the brakes on this population. No population grows forever, although this shape, this exponential model, captures a lot of dynamics that are going to make a lot of sense in, in some contexts. So there's no population that's ever going to grow exactly like exponential forever. I love the quote that all models are wrong, some models are useful. This one is really useful, it's very simple, so it doesn't take a lot for it to be wrong when we compare it to reality. But it is useful. So hold on to it, put this one in your toolbox, because I will assume that you have seen this when we move on to our next video. Thanks for joining me.